Hey, this is Brandon. Today we're going to be talking about how to use the WP Google Fonts plugin with your Super Skeleton theme. Uh, we've been getting a lot of questions lately about how to, you know, really kind of like manipulate the different typefaces and stuff that the theme uses. For a while there, we were including about, you know, 20 to 40 different typefaces uh, uh, from the Google Fonts library. If you guys are not familiar with the Google Fonts library, you guys can always find it at google.com backslash web fonts. Uh, this is a growing library that Google stores for different web developers. And uh, right now it has 501 different typefaces. It's something that if you guys have used before, you know, it's pretty easy to use, but it requires a little bit of work to basically integrate it with your theme. And today we're going to be talking about how to use a plugin that cuts out a couple of these steps and makes it a little bit easier for you guys to use. Just an advanced warning, this is going to be an intermediate to advanced video. It's going to require some basic knowledge of uh, CSS and the Google Web Fonts, you know, basic workflow to get this working. Um, but let's go ahead and install this plugin and uh, get you guys going. We're going to go ahead and get started from our dashboard. We're going to go into plugins and we're going to click the add new button. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to find this plugin that we're talking about. So it's going to look for WP Google fonts. It should be the first one that pops up here. We're just going to hit install now. And once that's done, we're going to hit activate. All right, that should be all set. What that plugin does, it's going to add a new panel under the settings tab. And it's going to be Google fonts. So we'll go in here and uh, the first thing you're going to probably notice is uh, it's going to give you a bunch of different options that you guys need to fill out. Now, there's six different fonts that you can pick. So, for instance, you could have a different font for the navigation and one for the page header and one for paragraph text and, you know, a different one for the sidebar if you want. You can have up to six different fonts if you guys want the main thing that we're going to kind of get started with is showing you guys how to do it for just one font. So let's go ahead and get started on that. The first thing I want to show you guys is they give you a full list of all the different Google fonts in here. There are a ton to pick from. It's probably easier for you guys to find them. If you guys go back to the Google site, because you can kind of get a visual representation of what that font looks like. Once you guys find the font that you really are in love with and you want to try it out, we're going to go back over here. In our case, for the demo, we're going to use the Advent Pro, and it's going to give you some different checkboxes to use. The important thing to say here is that these, for the most part, do not work very well at all. Uh, if you tell it to, uh, to use the headline one, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to replace it in the theme. Uh, the reason for that, and I'm hoping this is something that the plugin is going to improve over the next couple months, is that it's not very forceful. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't really push around the other... CSS in the theme. So for instance, if you're using, you know, the, the serif uh, font stack from the theme options, the serif font stack may override whatever you write in here. So we're going to have to move down to the custom CSS section to kind of really tell this plugin where and when you want to replace this text. Automatically, we already have some text in here. Uh, you guys will not have this stuff in here, uh, but because we were working with this earlier today, it's already remembered it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and copy this URL right here onto the YouTube description so you guys can go ahead and grab this. Uh, but what I've done is I've taken some time to write out just a list of all the different CSS elements that you guys could possibly want to use with the super skeleton themes. And again, this is going to work for all of the different themes, not just super skeleton. It's going to work for reason, reaction, shape shifter, and anything else that comes after this. But within this, if you guys know basic CSS, you're going to notice that we're identifying different elements here. So this is the paragraph element. This is the title class. And then I've even added some, you know, basic CSS notes in here. So you guys can kind of quickly identify what these are. So what I want you guys to do first is go ahead and copy all of this in here. And then you're going to go ahead and paste it directly into here and note that you can kind of pull this out if you need to see anything else. And we'll hit save. And we'll go ahead and head over here and we'll hit refresh. And you'll notice that it has replaced pretty much all of the different typefaces on the site, except for some that we didn't specify, which we're going to get into in a second, with our new Advent Pro font. 
So the main thing to note here is that you're given this drop down, and we selected Advent Pro. And then if you go to the very bottom of this, you're going to notice this line right here. What we're saying right here is that all of these different elements above this, we want them to replace the font family with Advent Pro. It has to be exactly as it's written up here. You guys don't need to include the 100, 200, or anything else like that. But for instance, if we wanted to use Alex Brush, we might use that and we'd type in Alex space brush exactly as it shows up right here. And we'll hit save. And forewarning, this is going to be horrendously ugly right now. Okay, so I warned you it's going to be ugly, uh, but now we replaced all of the different typefaces with Alex Brush, which, again, except for the ones that we didn't specify, and I'm going to get into that in just one second here. But how we did that, once again, is we selected all these different elements, and then at the very end, we told it to replace it with this font family. For most people, this should be, you know, pretty basic CSS if you guys have worked, uh, you know, with basic web design before but this is how it's going to work. So once again, if there's a space, just copy it exactly as it's shown. Don't include anything that's in the parentheses or anything, you know, after it. For Aladdin, for instance, we would just write in Aladdin. Let's save that and we'll try that out really quick just for one quick final example. And now we're using the Aladdin font. Uh, so that is going to show you guys how to swap out all of the major fonts across the theme, but obviously this is pretty ugly. You guys aren't going to want to be replacing, uh, you know, the, you're, you're not going to want to be using the same font that you're using for the headline as you're using for the body copy. So how do we separate this out? Um, if you guys have used basic CSS, you might already be catching on at this point. If we go back and look at this, you're going to notice that once again, we have all of our elements listed here. And at the very end, we have our font rule. If you guys don't want to use, you know, this for all of the different ones. So for instance, if we don't want to use it for the paragraph rule. We would copy this. We'd cut it out. We'd move down to font number two. We'd copy this in. We'd go back up and we'd just kind of copy this text right here just to be safe. We would go down. We're going to write this rule in here and keep in mind that if you guys want to, if you know basic CSS stuff, you can, you know, get rid of all the comments that I've left for you guys. And let's select a different font. I happen to like the actor font. It's pretty simple. We're going to type in actor and hit save. And we'll hit refresh. And now you'll see that for all of the basic paragraph text, we're using the actor font. That's pretty great. So for the last step, this is going to require a little bit of work on your guys's part. Um, if you guys have watched our uh, Firebug video yet, you guys will know that you can use the browser Firebug plugin to right click certain elements. Let me pick one up here so you guys can see it. Right click, hit inspect element with Firebug. It's going to pull up this panel where you guys can, you know, kind of quickly identify different classes that you guys might want to use. So in this case, we might want to grab the SF and then we want to, you know, use the strong ID inside of it or not the ID, the, uh, the element, you notice this is already here, right here. So say we only want to swap out the navigation font. We would go down to font number three, drop this in there. Once again, go ahead and grab this rule right here. Copy that in there. Let's pick a font that we might want to use. Drop that in there. Make sure there's a little bit of a space. Oh, you don't need that space. Sorry. And we're going to hit save. And because we've only specified on this third font, these two lines for the SF menu space strong that we identified from the Firebug plugin, when we hit refresh, it should swap those two fonts. And there you have it. So granted, this is pretty ugly, but this should give you guys the basic tools that you need to use the WP Google Fonts plugin with your Super Skeleton theme. All right, thanks a lot, you guys. I hope you guys have a lot of fun playing with all this different typography stuff. 
Keep in mind, you can also use the typekit.com service to pick from even more fonts than what Google has over there. And if you guys need any more help other than what's on this video, feel free to hit us up on Tixie at the support ticket system or find us on Theme Forest. Thanks a lot, you guys. Have a good one.